7.2 is about simplifying expressions. Can someone explain to me what you think the word simplifying sounds like or seems like? What do you think? Making it easier. Making it easier, okay? Simplifying is making something more simple. So today we're going to try to make our expressions a little bit more simple or easier to read. All right, let's look at the first one. These are just going to be different vocabulary terms that you're going to want to know. The first one says term. Read to me what a term is, guys. All right, parts of the expression being added together. You can see there's a lot of different ones. What's that first one that's there? An X. What's the next one? 4X. Next part. Eight. What about the next part? Okay, thank you for saying negative 10 because what's that saying that we had learned before? Every number has a sign and that sign is directly in front of that number. Good job. So be careful. Don't think of it as a minus, a positive. You are subtracting 10, which means it's a negative number, okay? And then the last part of that term, what is it? 3x. 3x, okay? So it's going to be a positive 3x, all right? So that's what a term is. Let's look at the next one. It says variable term. Read to me what a variable term is. A term with a variable in it. A term with a variable in it. Explain to me one more time. Someone raise your hand and let me know. What is a variable? What is it? A number. Not a number. It's represented by a what? Letter. A letter, okay? So anything that's got a letter there. So you can see the variable term here. This is x. How many x's are there on that one? one? Just one. So really, there is a number in front of that. That's a 1x, okay? This one, 4x. This one, 3x. Who can give me another example of another variable term? It's anything that has a letter in it. 2x or 2y. 2x or 2y. Who can give me one more? 5x. 5x, okay? It could be any letter of the alphabet. It could be 2m. 5z, it could be any letter of the alphabet, okay? Let's look at the next one, a coefficient. Everybody say coefficient. Coefficient. All right, so a coefficient is the number part of a variable term. Remember how we just talked about a variable term is anything that's got that letter in it. But I'm not worried about the letter right now. I am more worried about what the number is, okay? So in 1x, or plain old x, what is the coefficient or what is the number that goes with it? A 1, okay? 4x. What's the coefficient or what's the number part? 4. When you look at 3x, what's the coefficient? 3. Let's say I have another example, 20y. What is my coefficient? 20. I just want the number part, so what's the number part? 20, okay? Let's say that I have 500z. What would my coefficient be? 500. So just the number part is going to be my coefficient. Let's look at the next one, a constant. Read to me what a constant is. A number, a number that stands alone. A number that stands alone. So let's say that I have 5x plus 2. Which one is the number that stands alone? 2. two. So the 2 would be my constant. Let's say that I have 5z plus 24. What's my constant? 24, because that's the number that stands alone or it's all by itself. Let's look at one last term for today, like terms. Read to me what like terms are. Terms, terms with the same variable raised to the same power. So look at this right here. This says 2x squared. If you're thinking about something being in a family, that right there is in the x squared family. This is still in the x squared family because it's 4x squared. 3x squared, that's in the same family. So let's look at this right here. Let's say I had 2x plus 3y plus 21 plus 4x. Do you see anything that looks like it's in the same family or it has the same term? Yes. Which one? Which one? The 2x and what other family is that with? The 4x. Why are those in the same family or why are they like terms? Because they both have a what? They both have an x. This right here on your test coming up next week, knowing these terms and understanding them is going to be worth about 25% of your grade. So you really want to make sure that you understand these, okay? Let's do some examples that will help us to understand these terms even better. Example number one is asking us to identify the coefficient, the constant terms, and the like terms of the expression. So I want us to look at our terms that we just wrote down, the vocab words we wrote down. First thing we're looking for here, it's asking us for like terms. Read to me what the definition said of like terms that you wrote down on the first slide. What does it say? The same variable raised to the same power. 
terms with the same variable raised to the same power. So we're looking for things that are alike. Let's look at our first thing here. This is a 15. That's a plain old number 15. Do you see any other plain old numbers in this original problem? There's one other number in there. Okay. Not plain old 6, but what is it? Negative six. Negative 6. Because every number has a sign, and that sign is directly, directly in front of the number. Very good job. So those two are like terms. They're alike. They're similar, right? So we're going to go ahead and put them right here to help us know that these two are alike. 15 and negative 6. When you look back here at this original problem, do you guys see anything else that is alike yes. or has like terms? Michael, what is it? 9R and 7R. Okay, not just 9R. What kind of 9R? Negative 9R. Negative 9R. So now we're going to circle it just so we can see this is a different like term. All right, so once again, those are like terms, so we're going to put it right here. Negative 9R and 7R. Those are like terms. If you think about it like a family, this right here is a number family, just plain old numbers all right there by themselves. If you look at this one right here, this is like the R family, okay? So like terms is basically putting things into a family that they are like each other. Let's look at the next part, coefficients. I want you to look back at your notes and everybody read to me what the definition of a coefficient says. The number part of a variable term. The number part of a variable term. Remember a variable, it's anything with a letter. So what you want to do is you want to look at the parts that we have that the letters are there next to them. Is this right here with letters next to them? No. No, that's just plain old numbers standing by themselves. Does this have letters next yes. to them? Yes. I don't want to know the whole thing, negative 9R. I only want to know the number part. What is the number part of negative 9R? Nine. Negative 9. Negative 9. Make sure you keep that negative with it, okay? Are there any other coefficients in seven, this problem? Seven. And 7. Very good job. So negative 9 and 7 are my coefficients. Now we're going to look at the last and final thing. It's asked us to find out what the constants are in our original problem. Read to me the definition of a constant. A number that stands alone. So if you look up here, are there any numbers that were standing alone? Yes. Yes. What are they? Negative 6 and 6. Negative 6. Okay. 15 and negative 6. The order does not matter to me which order you put it in. Negative 6 and 15 or 15 and negative 6. All right? Just remember, a constant is a number that stands by itself. These are, once again, terms that you're going to need to know in the future. So make sure you're memorizing, just spending a couple minutes reviewing those each day. We're going to do one more example just like this one, but with a different problem. Problem B says x plus 4 minus 2x minus 10. The first thing we're looking for are some like terms. Do you see anything that is like the x? 2x. Not 2x. Negative 2x. Negative 2x. Remember, every number has a sign, and that sign is directly in front of that number, so keep the negatives with it, okay? Is there anything else in the x family? No. No, there is not. Is there anything else up there that you see that's alike? Yes. What is it? 2 and 4. 4 and negative 10. Okay, 4 and negative 10. negative 10. Keep that negative with it, all right? So now I want you to try to do the like terms, the coefficients, and the constants on your own. Okay, as I just walked around, I saw something that a lot of you guys were missing. I want us to look at just a couple things real quick. If you look at this X, how many X's are there? On the yellow that I just highlighted, how many is there? Only one. So what coefficient or what number goes with that X? The number one, okay, because I have one X. All right, so that's going to help you a little bit as we talk about our coefficients here in just a minute. Let's talk about the like terms. Who can tell me what you wrote down as having like terms? Jakari, what'd you put? Uh, 4 and negative 10. Okay, he put 4 and negative 10. And 1, 1 x and 2x. Okay, 1x and not 2x. Remember, the sign that comes in front of that 2x, what's it say? Negative 2x, okay. Now, it doesn't matter to me whether you put that 1 right there or not, but I just put it there to help you understand. Although it doesn't look like it has a number in the original problem, it is 1x, okay? Let's go to the next one, coefficients. Read to me one more time what the coefficient definition means. Go ahead. Number the number part, part of a variable term. Are these right here my variable terms? 
No, there's no letter there, so that's not my variable term. Is this my variable term? Yes. Yes. What is the number part? I don't want the x. I just want the number. One and negative two. One and what? Negative two. One and negative two is correct, okay? A lot of people did discover that it was a negative two, but a lot of you did not realize that one was also a coefficient. So remember, if it doesn't look like it has a number, it still has one, all right? Also be careful. Quite a few people tried to put in negative two x, the X is not a number part, so you don't want to put the X there with it, okay? Let's go to the next one, the constants. Carlos, what did you put down for your constants? Um, four and negative ten. Four and negative ten. Now, describe to me, what is a constant, Carlos? A number that stands alone. It is a number that stands alone, and as you look up there in your original problem, the four is by itself, the negative ten is by itself, so that's why those are my constants. Any questions about the like terms, coefficients, or constants? Okay, we're going to do a different kind of example now. For example number two, it asks us to simplify the expression. That doesn't mean to solve it. It means to simplify it, okay? Read to me what it says in the red. Combine, Combine like terms and then add the coefficients or the constants. All right, so let's just go ahead and underline anything that we see that's alike. What do you see that's like terms up there right now? 7c and 3c. 7c and negative 3c, okay? And then you can see this 9 right here is all by itself. If I were to combine, because this right here asks me to combine the like terms, what would 7c minus 3c be? 4c. 4c, okay? So we're going to bring that down, 4c, and then I'm just going to continue to bring down the plus 9. Is there anything else there that I can combine? No, okay? I cannot add plus 9 to the 4c because they're not like terms. The 9 is a constant, and then the 4c is a variable term. So that is our answer. You have simplified it or made it as simple as it possibly can be. So then you're finished with that problem. Let's go on to problem B. Who feels comfortable and wants to do problem B? 15 minus 4a plus 6a minus 25. Katie, let me have you try it. Okay, first things first, let's combine some like terms. So do you see anything there that's alike? Yes, 15 and 25. Okay, 15 and negative 25. Is there anything else that's alike? Four, negative 4a and 6a. Negative 4a and 6a. Okay, so let me teach you something. Anytime that you are putting something together as an expression, you always want to put the thing that has the variable first and then every time the constants will come last, okay? So Katie, go ahead and combine the variable terms first. So you're gonna add um, 4a and 6a, and you're gonna get 10a. Okay, be careful, it's not 4a. What is that? Negative 4a. Okay, so it's a little different. What would negative 4a plus 6a be? 2a. 2a. 2a, and then it's um, 2a, what would 15 minus 25 be? Five. Not 5. Remember our song, how we talked about same sign, add and keep, different signs, subtract and take. So we can tell these are two separate signs or different signs. You want to subtract the number and then take the sign of the bigger number. Negative 10. Negative 10. Okay, so it's 2a minus 10. Do you see anything that is a like term there? What is similar to 8b? Okay. 8b, not 4b. Negative 4b. Is there anything else in the b family? There is. What is it? Plain old b. If we were to put a coefficient with that b, what number would it be? One. Number 1. Okay, so 1b. Is there anything else in the b family? Nope, that's the only one. Now the only other poor thing all by itself, okay? So now let's combine the like terms. What is 8b plus 1b? 9b minus 4b. 5b. 5b, very good job. And then you're just going to bring down plus 10. So your answer is 5b plus 10. Once again, all we're doing is it making, we're making it more simple or simplifying it. You don't actually have to solve anything. Problem D, the first thing you want to do is combine like terms. So let's just see which ones we have that are like. Isabel, go ahead. Um, 8y and 2y. Okay, we know that 8y and 2y are similar. What else is similar? Five, negative 5x and 3x. Okay, is there anything else? 
there's one poor thing that stands alone. It's our constant, negative 15. Okay, so we've got three different terms that are separate from each other, all right? So let's go ahead and start with our x's. 3x minus 5x, what do you get? Remember what we learned, same sign, add and keep, different signs, subtract and take. Negative 2 what? Negative 2x. Then remember, you always want to do all of your letters first, and then we'll save the constant for the very last thing. So what about the y's? 2y plus 8y. 10y. Plus 10y. And then what's the last thing? Negative 15. Minus 15. Very good job. For this problem, you've got to remember the distributive property. So for the distributive property, we have to multiply whatever is on the outside by everything on the inside, okay? So Michael, help me with this first one. What's five times W? How would I write that? Uh, five times one W. Okay, so it's as if you have a one there, which just means it's five times W, five W, okay? Bring down your minus sign, and now we're going to do what's five times four? 20. 20. 20 not 20W, just plain old 20, okay? Then you're going to bring everything else down, plus W, plus 8. Now we want to work on combining our like terms. Is there anything that's similar to the 5W? Uh, yes, the W. The regular old W, what would the coefficient be for that? A 1, okay, so I'm just going to slip a 1 in there. Is there anything similar to the negative 20? Um, the, eight. Eight. the 8, okay? So now, Michael, I want you to go ahead and combine the like terms. Remember, we always do the variable term first, and the constant comes second. So what's 5w plus 1w? 5w plus 1w, 6w. Very good. And then what is negative 20 plus 8? Negative 12 is correct. So we've got 6w minus 12. Once again, I want us to remember our distributive property. This 3 is on the outside of the parentheses, so I've got to multiply the 3 by everything on the inside of the parentheses. Let's look at this first one right here. What is 3 times 2x? 6x. 6x. Bring down your plus sign. And then what is 3 times 5? 15. 15. And then you're just going to bring everything else down, and now we'll start combining the like terms. So the first thing that I've got here, 6x. What else is similar to the 6x? 6x. Another 6x. Okay, so we'll combine those. What about the next ones? Are these numbers similar at all? Yes. What is it? 15. 15 and negative. negative 15. What does 15 and negative 15 equal? Zero. Zero. So here's what we're going to do. I just want you to go ahead and cross those out because you don't have to think about them anymore. So now I've got 6x plus 6x. What's the answer? 12x. 12x. And that is as simple as it can get. We've got one final problem that I want you to do today. So if you remember the distributive property, that means this one's got to be multiplied by that and by this and by this. But before we do all of that, I want you to look to see, is there anything that you can combine inside of my parentheses? Remember with PEMDAS, you do the work inside the parentheses yes. first. Yeah. Three, eight, three, eight. 3a and negative 3a. What happens to 3a and negative 3a? It cancels each other out. So just put an x on top of those, and all we are left with is just the 10. So now I'm going to rewrite it, and when I multiply, I'm just multiplying by a 10. And then just bring down the rest of the line. Now we're going to check to see if we have any like terms. Is there anything like the 15? Yes. yes. What is it? Oh, wait. Before we do that, let's go ahead and multiply this out. Sorry about that. What is negative 2a times 10? 20a. Negative 20a. Okay. Then bring everything else down. Now we are ready to combine the like terms. So, is there anything similar to a 15? Yes. Five. Negative 5. Those are both constants. Is there anything similar to the negative 20a? 6a. 6a. Okay. So what should I do first, the variable term or the constants? The constants. No, the constants will always be last. The number that stands by itself will always be last. So let's combine negative 20a plus 6a. Same sign or different sign? Different signs. Different signs. Subtract the numbers and take the sign of the larger number, and what do you get? Negative 14a. 
And now we're going to look at these last final two, 15, negative 5. What would that be? 10. 10. 10 is correct. Is that a positive or a negative 10? Positive. That is a positive 10. So your answer is negative 14a plus 10. Here is tonight's homework for 7.2.